Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Today we're going to be talking about how to convert radians into degrees if you're dealing with different angle measures. So in my last video I talked about the opposite, so converting degrees to radians. So I'm going to make this one a little bit quicker because it is a very similar process. So to convert from radians to degrees, so if you're given some sort of a radian measure which measures some angle in radians, if you want to convert that radians into degrees, simply multiply the radians by 180 degrees over pi radians. Okay, so this is based on the fact that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. Or in other words, a full circle has 360 degrees and a full circle is two pi radians. So if you cut both those in half or put you know, 360 over two pi, simplify that fraction, that leaves you with 180 over pi radians. So half a circle is 180 degrees, half a circle is also pi radians. So basically the idea there is multiplying some sort of a radian measure by 180 degrees divided by pi radians doesn't actually change the value of that angle measurement because 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians, right? Like if you ever have some number, let's say you have some fraction, uh, you know, if you think back to like adding fractions, if you're trying to like add these two fractions, let's just say you wanna get a like denominator. So you would take this fraction and multiply it by whatever you need on the top and the bottom to get your like denominator on the bottom of that fraction. Well, what you do here, multiplying by two over two, that's the same as multiplying by one. Right, which multiplying something by one doesn't change its value. So multiplying something by 180 degrees over pi radians, that's like multiplying by one because those two things are equal. So you're not changing its value. All you're doing is converting it into a different measure of units, essentially. So let's go into some examples of how to do this. Before we do that though, if you haven't already, go check out jakesmathlessons.com slash precalculus study guide or scan that QR code in the corner of your screen right there. I came out with that recently. It should be super helpful for you as you work through homework, practice for tests, whatever it is with a pre-calculus or college algebra class. Just go check out that URL or that link right there, link in the description as well. Uh, there's plenty more info on that, but you can add it for download. So um, definitely recommend checking that out. Well, let's go ahead and do a couple of examples here. So let's say we want to convert these three radian measures from radians to degrees. Okay, like I said, all we have to do is multiply each of them by 180 degrees over pi radians, okay? So if we wanna do that, keep in mind these are all in radians, so you could kind of imagine this is like, you know, five pi over 11 radians, 13 pi over two radians, or negative 0 0.57 radians, okay? If we wanna convert these into degrees, like I said, all you have to do is multiply them by 180 degrees over pi radians, right there, like we talked about before. So if I wanna do this, I could multiply five pi over 11 radians times 180 degrees over pi radians. So I, I know it looks kind of weird having the units in here as well, but what you'll notice here is kind of interesting. It kind of does the work for you in terms of remembering if it's 180 degrees over pi radians or vice versa. So this is how you can always remember is to put your units on there because if you put your units on there, think about think of, think of the units as an actual term being multiplied. I know that's not really how it works, but if you think of five pi over 11 radians as like five pi over 11 times radian, which again, that doesn't actually make any sense, but what it does accomplish for us here is it makes us double check how the units are actually converting. Because if you think of this radian as like an actual thing being multiplied here, what you'll notice is having this five pi over 11 radians and then dividing by pi radians over here, you could kind of imagine these radians canceling each other out and you're just left with some, some uh, unit of measurement of degrees. So it kind of forces you into keeping track of what units you are actually converting. If you're starting with some radian measure and then dividing by some radian measure and then multiplying by some degree measure, 
the radians kind of undo each other and you're just left with some degree measure. So again, you, you want to be kind of careful there. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that radians or degrees is actually some thing being multiplied by these numbers. But if you can kind of think of it that way in terms of keeping uh, the, the unit measures kind of on their own field, like you just want to keep the units together and kind of make sure they're canceling out like that, it, it does kind of help you keep track of what you're actually multiplying by. Because you would, you would find that it would not work that way if you were to multiply by pi radians over 180 degrees. So if you flipped it upside down, it wouldn't end up canceling out like this if you, if you do kind of think of it like that. So just kind of a little trick I've used to help me keep my units straight and make sure that I'm actually converting from radians to degrees and not just arbitrarily multiplying by some other fraction that then makes things more complicated. So let's think about how this would actually simplify. So again, just kind of thinking about things canceling, we have a pi on our numerator right here and we also have a pi on our denominator down here. So those pi's are gonna cancel as well. And then we're just gonna be left with five over 11 times 180 degrees. So basically that'll just leave us with five over 11 times 180 degrees. From there, we could pretty much just type that into a calculator and see what that actually gives us. So if we were to do that, I'll actually just bring my calculator over here. So if we take five divided by 11, five divided by 11, and then times that by 180, that leaves us with 81.818, let's say, 81.818. And make sure to put your, your unit of degrees on there, okay? Um, if you wanted to leave it in exact form instead of multiplying and, you know, rounding to three decimal places, you could always think about how to simplify this fraction instead. Uh, may not actually, yeah, I don't think it even would simplify, but you could at least kind of put it into a single fraction. So let's go through this one a little bit quicker. So same idea. We have 13 pi over 2 radians times... 180 degrees over pi radians. So this one's going to work out pretty similarly to the last one. You could kind of think of your radians canceling each other out because one is essentially in the numerator. You know, it's this, this radian measure times something with radian in the denominator. They're basically going to cancel. Then we have a pi on our numerator and our denominator, so those are going to cancel as well, giving us 13 over 2 times 180 degrees. And again, we could just type that into a calculator round to two or three decimal places, you know, whatever the problem tells you to do. And that should be good there. So this last one's going to look a little bit weird because usually when you think about radians, you think about having pi in it. But you don't necessarily have to have pi in order for it to be radians. You know, theoretically, you could have a pi in a degree measure and you could have a radian without a pi in it. It's the same idea because we're still just going to take our negative 0.57 radians and multiply it by 180 degrees over pi radians and see how it simplifies out. So the radian kind of unit of measure is still going to cancel like it was before, and we're still going to be left with just degrees. So that kind of confirms for us that we've you know, set up our fraction in the right order. But what we're going to end up with is just negative 0.57 times 180 over pi degrees. So if we were to then, you know, type all this into a calculator, what we would end up with in this case is 0.57, and then we'll make that negative, and then times 180 divided by pi, which is right there. So that's going to leave us with negative 32.659. Degrees. So again, you know, we, we do kind of end up with a pi in our degrees instead, but you know, once you plug that into a calculator, that just, just gives you some uh, irrational infinite decimal um, for our degree measure there. So that's, that's really all there is to that. So um, if you did get some value out of this video, do me a favor, go hit that like button down below. Really do appreciate that. And like I said, I did come out with a video uh, recently just uh, talking about converting from degrees to radians, so opposite order. 
I think you're going to find that helpful too. So go check out that video right up there so you can kind of keep this brain train rolling and I'll see you next time. Thanks.